ever since I lost partial vision in my left eye a few years ago and continue to suffer with lots of eye ailments, uh, definite degradation in peripheral vision, depth perception, uh, sensitivity to light, headaches, that sort of thing. I have become much more acutely aware of people with disabilities. And I am not sitting here asking for sympathy, saying I am disabled because I am far from it. I drive to work. I live a very normal, productive life. For the most part, I just have some setbacks. But I have to say there's definitely a soft spot in my heart now because I can totally relate on a very small level to people who have major accessibility issues and are disabled in some capacity and can't play games because this channel is about my favorite passion in the world, which is gaming. And it sucks to think that one day, maybe somebody like me who lives for games could ever lose so much vision I couldn't play anymore or lose motor function as time went on and have a hard time picking up a controller. So years ago when Xbox released the um, Xbox adaptive controller, um, I was definitely a champion for that. And it took Sony way too long, but they finally have announced their own iteration that was uh, presented today during their CES keynote. There was some other news. I didn't think it was that memorable, honestly, but this was definitely the big takeaway for me personally that PlayStation is introducing Project Leonardo. Um, it's going to be coming to the PlayStation 5, and it is a highly customizable accessibility controller kit. Um, this is designed primarily for people who have physical handicaps that have a difficult time holding a controller for whatever reason. Um, this is designed to make that experience easier, easier for those types of gamers. We have seen a massive push from Sony's first party studio, so much so that it's been nationally recognized numerous times regarding their accessibility options in games like The Last of Us and God of War Ragnarok and Horizon Forbidden West, where you can change a litany of color schemes and gameplay difficulty options. Um, closed captions, different colored backgrounds, different sound effects, different vibration or haptic feedback, depending on things you're doing, aiming with the gyroscope, aiming with touch pads, anything and everything to make the game more accessible to people, which to me is a Herculean effort and one that should absolutely be commended on both accounts. And I have to say, sadly, it doesn't seem like Nintendo is really playing ball the way that Xbox has, and now Sony is finally starting to. I would like to see that change. I really would. I don't see why they uh, can't follow suit with what everybody else is doing. But the uh, the idea here behind this controller is that it's these two kind of rings that have um, different types of buttons laced around the perimeter of them that do map to all of the buttons on a controller. Basically, just think of a controller, but completely blown out, um, expanded in such a large way where you can now ch change the way you hold the controller. And Sony went to great lengths to meet with some of these organizations like Able Gamers, uh, Special Effect, and Stack Up. I haven't heard of Special Effect and Stack Up. I am very familiar with Able Gamers. Um, they are very, very vocal during a lot of game conferences. And um, hopefully this raises awareness for the other two. As I don't know anything about them, but I, I definitely will read into them a little bit later. Um, but the idea here is to help players who have limited motor control, like difficult, as I said, like difficulty holding a controller or accurately pr pressing buttons if the buttons feel cramped, kind of like me with my big gorilla hands when I'm trying to play my uh, Nintendo Switch in the undocked mode <laughs> where my hands are totally cramping up. I can't even play my 3DS anymore because I can't get my fingers on the L and R buttons while I'm hitting the face buttons. So... I get it. <laughs> Obviously, again, first world problems, at least in my perspective, uh, in the fact that it's just, oh, I can't play all of my old games because I'm too big, but I get the idea. This is uh, totally customizable, very similar to what Microsoft did with their Xbox adaptive controller. Um, you can change the distance of everything, the um, 
the, everything's swappable, completely customizable. There's different caps that have different sizes and different uh, adjustments where you can attach all of these buttons in any configuration that you see fit to help you play better. Now, something that I experimented with a long time ago, and I suspect PlayStation will be going this route as well, um, they have started to allow for multiple input types simultaneously. You see this a lot on PC where people are playing with both a controller and a mouse or a controller and a keyboard. I suspect you will see support for this um, module with a regular DualSense 5 um, controller because, is it DualSense 5? I think it's just DualSense. Because it used to be, yeah, I think it's Dual, I think it used to be, I think it was Dual, um, I don't know, leave a comment below, let me know the name of the controller. I think it's Dual, I don't think there's a 5, but regardless. Um, the idea here though, is that I, I suspect you're going to be able to mix and match to make it to your perfect customization. There's a litany of software options that are going to be uh, enabled. Um, there are, um, button mappings, which I thought this actually already existed, um, where you can basically have like a cheat button. You see this a lot on fighting games when you're trying to put in a long combination of moves, uh, or hit like a high kick, low kick simultaneously. I thought this functionality already existed. If it didn't, great, because I think a lot of people are gonna enjoy this <laughs> in their controller if they don't already have it. Um, and then you're gonna be able to set up custom profiles as well, which I think pretty much goes par with the course now considering everything is logging in and syncing up your controller to your particular uh, user interface and how you like to look and see things. So that would make total sense to me that the uh, controller scheme would just be a natural extension of the profile option. There's also a litany of, and here's what I was talking about, where you can actually mix and match um, some of the controller settings here. Uh, players can augment their DualSense controller with the, okay, so this this is what I was saying earlier. Um, you'll be able to augment your DualSense. Uh, no, no, see, no number five there, just DualSense. Um, using one or two of these controllers, um, a friend or family can also assist by uh, jumping in and playing. So, um, Controllers can be turned on and off dynamically. So yeah, just like I was speculating above, um, clearly I did my research for this video. Um, clearly though, that it, the idea is that you're going to be able to um, make it the way that feels good for you, which is awesome. That's what this is all about. That's exactly the core of what accessibility is about, is making the game more accessible for everybody. Um, the controller is also gonna come with a bunch of different auxiliary ports. Uh, this is the industry standard three and a half millimeter aux ports. The, um, Xbox adaptive controller was completely littered with these, and this will basically support any third party external switch or uh, toggle. I've seen different types of uh, buttons and, and different types of ways to connect uh, a controller to customize it the way you want, whether it's pushing something down with your foot, like a foot pedal or something in your mouth to blow on or chew or lean your neck or your ear against your shoulder. So this will support that. Uh, it's got some expansion slots there, which is phenomenal. Um, and uh, yeah, I think this is actually really interesting. There's a video that's built into here. I'm not going to play it, but there's a video that um, I did browse through. I thought I was actually going to give a little bit more information of like what the controller looked like, but it was just individuals who experienced or have some sort of disability who were talking about features that they wanted to see. So this isn't really that exciting, at least in terms of an informational perspective. It's just kind of explaining everything that I did in a much more concise video. But good on you, Sony. I got to say, it took you guys a little longer than I think it should have, considering we're in your fifth generation console and you're finally recognizing this. I know that Sony has made insane strides in the accessibility, as I mentioned, on their gaming platforms, particularly their first party games. It's nice to see that they're backing it up with some hardware as well, especially when you think that we are all going to be getting our hands on the PlayStation um pro controller here in just a few weeks. Um, I can't wait to get my hands on one and check it out. Uh, it's nice to see that they are definitely being more inclusive. And I hope that this type of um, accessibility continues for all games and makes it more accessible for other gamers. So that I'll post a, a link to this blog in the description below. Let's go check it out, read about it. If I blew over something or you know, as you guys love to do in my videos, comment and tell me what I got wrong because I'd love to hear from you guys. But make sure while you're down there, you subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate your support. 
that will wrap up the video for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.